Say I hear you. Yeah. So I'm not going to let anybody come up this pulpit and mess around with the sacredness of God's word and cause your minds to be unsettled. Because when people begin to hear from two different altars, and what I mean by two different altars is from two different preachings, which are coming from two different directions. One is focusing on works, and the other one is focusing on the finished work of Christ. Confusion is bound to abide. Our eyes must be focused. We all with open face. Only one thing. Beholding the glory of God where? As in a mirror. That's where our gaze should be on Christ and Christ and Christ and Christ alone. Say, I hear you. And I've made up my mind, I'm not going to use my pulpit for politics. Never. Because I value every one of you. Your souls are important to God. And everybody else that is in our campuses and follows me everywhere around the world on TV and online. I've made a commitment to the Lord Jesus. I will not use my pulpit for politics. Never. If a man stands behind this pulpit, whether in my absence or in my presence, he must have same food same diet that we're used to eating he must have the same thing to give us see i hear you very important amen and i've trained you good enough if anybody by mistake stands here and he says rubbish you will take care of him you will reject you will reject his food when he brings the bread you will throw it back on him so to avoid calling us rude let them stay where they are we're happy to be where we are if you're excited about that, say, I hear you. And I know you will never get tired of me. Whether you like it or yes. Except it's not Jesus you're looking for because we have more than enough Jesus to show here. Somebody shout hallelujah. So that's why a man of God must realize that the church he has been asked to pastor, he has the sole responsibility for that assignment. He has the sole responsibility. Look at what is becoming of the church in theatre. Just because of compromise. Wrong teachings have entered the congregation. And there's confusion because now it's Christ and other things. The doctrine of Jezebel, the depths of Satan have come into that church. People have been seduced to commit fornication and to eat food sacrificed to idols in the same church. Now very soon you will find out what it means to eat food sacrificed to idols and to commit adultery. The statement, as many as have not this doctrine, like I said, means that it was not part of the teachings of that church. It was not part of their practice. So he used the word suffer. That is, they allowed it. They have suffered Jezebel. They have allowed it. Alright? Very important. Okay? Now, please you must remember. Part of the good work of the church, of this church, was that they had the doctrine of Christ. But there was another doctrine that came in. They had the doctrine of Christ. It's not as if they were not taught. It's not as if they were not taught. They were taught the message. It's just Christians that are, that are you know, are restless. Restless believers. Who are part of a church where you're fed, you're taught well. Then suddenly, you develop a restlessness. You start looking for variety. You feel like, uh-uh, our church, every time, Jesus, 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 I hear that there is a program in town and one powerful man of God I've been watching on TV is coming. You sneak and you go to attend the program and then they feed you by force the bread of, 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 of Satan. You eat it without thinking and then gradually the pressure comes. You start compromising. And before you know it, you, you take one or two sisters from the church. I'm, I'm using sisters because sisters are very quick to do this kind of thing. You take one or two sisters from the church, two of you start attending the program. And then that day, fortunately or unfortunately, the man of God did and told you the history of your family. Ah! He said, so there is something like this. You are beginning to develop an unhealthy appetite. Very unhealthy appetite. Before you know it, you're gone. You have the doctrine of Christ, but now you have opened up to be seduced by Jezebel. Because you are restless. You are restless. You are not contented. You are greedy. And because you are greedy, you are eating from two tables. You are eating from the table of, of the Lord, and you are eating from the table of devils. You are committing adultery. That's where the problem is. Including those of you watching on TV and those of you watching on Facebook and all the different campuses. When people cannot settle in one place and be rooted and be established and be fed. When all their bodies always itching them to move around. Such people are dangerous. 
when somebody cannot show you exactly where he always is when somebody is always everywhere he's somebody to be careful with because if you know carry go you go carry come i don't know where i got that one from right now teaching good they that are planted there has to be a planting you're rooted you stay you're grounded you're established not moving around when you see jesus what else are you looking for so this church brought in strange things which was not part of what was taught unlike the church at ephesus who had left their first love and were teaching the wrong teaching at least this church still had the doctrine of christ but some people were trying to bring in a mixture into that congregation so he further explained the doctrine which seduces believers into fornication and eating food offered to idols and that doctrine is called knowing the depths of satan that doctrine is called knowing the depths of satan the word satan was taken from the greek word satanas satanas s-a-t-a-n-a-s satan satanas which implies opposition in this context an opposition to the doctrine of christ the depths of satan is an opposition to the doctrine of christ the depth of satan you're not hearing me is an opposition to the message of christ when people begin to say a believer needs deliverance when that message is preached it is an opposition to the gospel of christ because the gospel of christ says a believer has been delivered but an opposition gospel or a doctrine of satan or a doctrine of the depth of satan says a believer needs deliverance it's an opposition gospel how can a believer be needing deliverance what does it mean to believe what does it mean to be born again how can a born again believer be saying he is possessed possessed by what he is bought with a price he is bought with a price he has been bought spirit soul and body his spirit and his body and his soul are god he has the mind of christ what are you delivering him from it's fraud it's fraud amen the depth of satan opposition against the finished work of christ opposition to the gospel this is similar to what jesus said in matthew chapter 16 verse 21 the synoptics from that time forth began jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day then peter took him and began to rebuke him opposition peter began to rebuke him saying be it far from thee lord this shall not happen you will not die jesus you will not die peter was rebuking jesus look at what jesus answered peter but he turned and said unto peter get thee behind me satan satanas and opposition get thee behind me opposition thou art an offense unto me thou art an offense unto me any message if you are truly born of god and you're matured in the message any message that is not predicated on the finished work of christ should be an offense to you when you are hearing it it should be offending you you cannot hear it and be happy and be comfortable and be saying let us see where it is going it is going nowhere once it is not predicated on what christ has done it is an opposition gospel it's an opposition gospel just like there are opposition parties this one is an opposition gospel satanas get it behind me satan thou art an offense unto me why for thou savorest not the things that be of god when a man a brother a sister a man of god does not savor the finished work of christ tell him to get behind you satanas satanas it's even more powerful than the english one get it behind me satanas you suffer not the things that be of god but those that be of men teaching good 
If I'm teaching good, can I hear a good amen? amen. Okay. So the, he used the word burden, which implies responsibility. It was for them to hate and despise and speak against this doctrine. That's the responsibility of the church. To speak against this doctrine. To despise this doctrine. To hate this doctrine. That's the job of the church. He described the doctrine as that of false prophetess Jezebel. The doctrine of Jezebel. It is the job of this church to resist anything that comes on this pulpit. You resist it vehemently. Don't even be nice about it. Anything trying to rob you of your reality in Christ. Don't even be nice about it. Trying to rob you of what Jesus suffered for. Amen. I said amen. And what is the job of this, uh, of this teaching? Is to seduce. To lead the servants of God astray. To lead God's people into error. Now the name Jezebel therefore has a figurative expression. Alright. As a figurative expression. Jezebel is a figure of speech. It's a teaching which seduces and causes believers to go astray. The doctrine of Jezebel. It seduces. It's a metaphor. It seduces and causes believers to go astray. So the fornication there and eating of sacrificed food to idols was not literal fornication. And it was not literal eating of food sacrificed to idols. But it was a figurative expression of what this false teaching does. A figurative expression of what this false teaching does. So he brings in what he used earlier on with the church at Pagamos. The doctrine of Balaam. What is it called? The doctrine of Balaam. What is the doctrine of Balaam? Well, the doctrine of Balaam there, which is a teaching that inspires greed and covetousness in believers. A teaching that inspires greed and covetousness in believers. A teaching that is about, you know, measuring with material acquisition. A materialistic gospel. A message of materialism. Every time, how to get there. Every time, five steps to make it. Every time, don't give up. The Lord will soon make it happen. All testimonies are based on, I bought a car, I built a house, I just got a contract, I just married a wife. God is good. When all the focus is on material things, it is the doctrine of Balaam. When the through word of a believer in a congregation is measured by his material acquisition, it is the penetration of the doctrine of Balaam. Psalm 91. $91 for 91 blessings. The doctrine of Balaam. Psalm 32. $32 for 30, 32 blessings. is the doctrine of Balaam. God is not a money doubler. God is not MMM. You don't give to God and he doubles it. No, that's fraud. See, I hear you. So, the doctrine of Balaam is a doctrine that creates greed and covetousness. It's a, a teaching that brings inside believers, you know, greed. It inspires greed. And then there's a word called fornication. Translated from the Greek word porneo, which implies to indulge in a lawful act of sex. To indulge in a lawful act of sex. Okay? Literally or figuratively. It's either literal or figurative. And I'm going to show you the two areas where they are used. Brother Paul used that same word penoa in his letter to the church at Corinth. And in that church, he was talking about literal fornication. 1 Corinthians 6, 18. See the way he applies it. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. So he's talking about physical, you know, unlawful act of sex. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. Alright? So he's dealing with, you know, uh, unlawful act of sex here. Alright? And then brother Paul also, you know, uses the same word in, in that church at Corinth. When he was indicting them of their, you know, of their immorality. 
but in revelation the writer of revelation in revelation 2 20 where we are talking about he was using the word fornication as a figure of speech it was figurative he used the same word in revelation 2 14 but i have a few things against it because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of balaam who taught balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication consistently he spoke of eating things offered to idols then buttressing the fact that that thing that you eat that is offered to idols is fornication that's what he meant that eating what is offered to idols is fornication okay and it was figurative see how he uses the word in other places in the same book revelation 17 1 to 2 and there came one of the seven angels who had the seven vials and talked with me saying unto me come hither i will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that seated upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication this cannot be physical this is metaphor this is a figure of speech look at another one revelation 18 verse 3 and 9 the way he used it for all nations have drunk of the wine of the rot of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are works rich through the abundance of her delicacies this cannot be physical fornication because there is no one woman that all the kings of the earth have committed fornication with where will that woman have been that all the kings you know all the kings including the ones in your village all the kings of the earth so it has to be metaphorical look at revelation 18 verse 9 you see the way he uses it again and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live del deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning so these are metaphors metaphors and all uses here are figurative just like we said the fornication and immorality here was spiritual idol worship of or idolatry idol worship or idolatry the phrase sacrifice to idols was translated from the greek word edolothuton e-i-d-e-l-o-t-h-u-t-o-n from which you will find the word edelon meaning idols and you will see the use of that word idols in first john 5 21 little children keep yourselves from idols amen idols believers as to stay away or keep themselves away from idols but in that church they allowed the teaching of jezebel which seduced people to idol worship and fornication and eating things sacrificed to idols in that particular church you know that church in revelation where we are theatra look at first thessalonians 1 9 for they themselves show of what of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how we turned how you turn to god from idols to serve the living and true god you turn from idols to serve the living and true god look at the way he, he used it again here in second corinthians 6 16. and what agreement had the temple of god with idols what agreement has the temple of god with idols notice the believer is the temple of god the unbeliever is described as idols unbelievers are idols believers are the temple of god so he now says what fellowship or agreement has a believer with idols an unbeliever the temple of god with an unbeliever is the temple of god with an idol so a man that does not believe the gospel of christ is referred to as an idol now an idol here does not refer to an image it does not refer to a particular altar somewhere or a sanctum where people come and kneel down an idol in this context is self self when self becomes more important than the finished work of christ when self becomes more important than god then self becomes an idol an idol of selfishness an idol of self the new birth thrives on the indwelling of the spirit that causes us to naturally serve god 
An unbeliever is without the spirit, so he serves self. An unbeliever serves himself. The God of an, of an unbeliever is himself. He has no God elsewhere. He doesn't care about anybody. He only cares about himself. The believer lives a life of the spirit. And a life of the spirit makes him care about others. The love of God makes you reach out to others. You care about others. You look after the welfare of others. Amen. So the worship of idols is selfishness. The worship of idols in that church is selfishness. So the teaching of Jezebel, which seduces or leads the servants of the Lord astray, is materialism. Again, materialism. A message that is all about self. You know what I mean? Self. I'm thinking of myself. So even if there is a cause where the gospel needs money, where the gospel needs money to reach out to people, you think of self first. And when you think of self, you don't have anything left for the gospel. So self is what you are serving. You are not serving God, you are serving self. I hope you know Jesus said, you cannot serve God and mammon. Hello? You cannot serve God? Clear. You cannot serve two of them. You are either serving God or you are serving mammon. So when your Christianity is about what will God do for me? How will God do it? When will God do it? God do for me. God do for me. God do for me. God do for me. Pray the Lord. He has done it again. The Jeep is outside. The Jeep is outside. The Lord has done it again. I just built a house. When that is all your testimony, you are serving yourself. Many people do not serve God. They use God to serve themselves. You didn't understand what I said. They do not serve God. They use God to serve themselves. Father, you said before December, I will buy a car. You came through prophet so and so. And the prophet shook his head, hit his leg, clapped his hand, shook his head and said... In the next three months, my daughter, I see you. I see you working for United Nations. They give you car and house. And if I be a man of God, by the next time I'm back to this church, you will be in that mansion. From that day, that sister has left Christ. Her vision, her dream, her prayer, her fasting. If she comes to church and we are preaching, She's not hearing Christ. She's looking for what we will say that will make that mansion come to pass. When we say, let us pray for evangelism. Ah, I'm not interested. Now, we want to pray that thing you are believing God for. In the next three months, it has to happen. Clap your hands, shake your head, stamp your feet. She will shake and hit people because that prophet has swayed her from Christ. He has seduced her with self-worship did you hear what i said with what self-worship and there are many people in our churches who are not worshiping god they are worshiping self it's idolatry they are given to idolatry they have been seduced to commit fornication the jezebelitan spirit in a metaphor is at work in them so they are using god to meet their needs they are using god they will not pray until they are sure God will do it. So anybody that will preach what will make them achieve their physical desires, that is a man of God. But anybody that comes to talk about Christ, the finished work of Christ, our inheritance is not material, that thing in them, that idolatry is provoked. It's provoked. And I don't even want to preach in those churches. Because I've been to some of those churches. I've been there. Where their appetite is about self. If you preach and you don't talk about their problems will be solved. You didn't preach. They will tell their pastor, don't bring him. 
they will tell their pastor don't bring that man of God to this church again because there are some churches where you go there to preach where you live their pastor will do a feasibility study of the three men of God that came to our convention which of them do you people want to come back again then the church will vote are you understanding how I know is that I went to some churches and I know I don't want to call names. And when I left, they said the pastor came up and said there were four guest speakers in this convention. One, two, three, they called our names and I was one. Which of them do you want back? The whole church shouted, Dr. Damina! And the pastor wasn't happy. Because what I preached did not massage self. I took their eyes from him and I put it on Christ and he was angry. And the pastor decided I won't come back. So now when he asked his church, who do you want? And they shouted my name. I'm sure in his heart he said, till you die, you won't see him here. <laughs> I have one assignment to put the spotlight on who? Christ. That's my assignment. And if you don't want it, don't bring me to your church. I'm warning you. Because even if I hold your microphone for 30 minutes, I will move your people from you to Christ. I am gifted. It's an apostolic thing. Once I hold the microphone, give me 30 minutes of exegesis. By the time I shoot, boom, 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 scriptures, and I'm bringing Christ out. Ba, 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 ba. By the time I give you a microphone, nobody will see you again. Nobody will see you again. I am gifted. It's a calling. It's an assignment I carry. It's an assignment, except I don't hold the microphone. I'm not joking, I'm very serious. By the time I finish one service, they make the mistake of giving me four days. Your church will even remember that you are a pastor in that place again. When I came among you, I desire to know nothing. Save Christ and Him crucified. I thought somebody would shout, Glory! Glory! The pastor has not called me again. Even though the church, they are busy writing him. We want Dr. Damina. Some of them will even come on Facebook and inbox me. Dr. Damina, tell our pastor to invite you. Dr. Damina, tell our pastor to invite you. So me, I will write back. Tell your pastor to invite me. Nobody asks a man to invite him. All of you gather, tell your pastor to invite me. He said, we have been telling him he's doing like he's not hearing us. The next time there is something I will tell you, it's time for you to leave that church. It's time for you to leave the place. Any place where people don't want to hear Christ is not a church. It's an event center. It's an NGO. The church of Jesus feeds on Jesus. If I'm teaching good, say I hear you. Peter also used the same word adultery figuratively. To refer to greed and covetousness. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 14 to 16. Having eyes full of adultery. And that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls. And hearts they have exercised. With covetous practices. Caused children. Caused children. What kind of children? Caused children. 15. Which are forsaking the right way. And are gone astray. Following the way of Balaam. The son of Basal, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. He loved what? The wages of unrighteousness. But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice. Forbade the madness of the prophet. I like in James Bible. Did you see the way he used the English there? But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice. Forbade the madness of the prophet. He forbade the madness of the prophet. I like that English. Please make sure you forbade them. This guy loved the wages of unrighteousness, greed, selfishness, covetousness. The doctrine of Balaam. And it's big in our churches. And there must be an army that will abort that doctrine completely out of the church. Say, I hear you. And that army is here today. All over the world, from sea to sea, from coast to coast, from nation to nation, from continent to continent, from city to city, from village to village, the message of Christ exalted, Christ glorified, will be the only thing that people will hear. If you're a witness, shout, I hear you. Jude also spoke about it. Jude 1 11. Woe unto them, 
for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. The error of Balaam is what? Reward, greed, covetousness. And where did they perish? In the gainsaying of call. Balaam. The key thing about the doctrine of Balaam is materialism, greed, and covetousness. And this can be seen historically in the book of Numbers 22-21. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went to the princes of Moab. Okay? Look at Numbers 23, 18 to 24. And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hear unto me, hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And he had blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He had not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither had he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath as it were the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel. What God hath wrought. 24. Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink of the blood of the slain. Next verse. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. And Balaam answered and said to Balak, Told I not thee, he said, All that the Lord speaketh that I must do. Next verse. And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Peradventure it will please God that thou mayest cause me them from thence. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor that looked toward Jesimon. Balaam, for money, was running around looking for how to cause Israel. He was a prophet given to covetousness and eventually idol worship. All right? Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam, the way of Balaam, the counsel of Balaam. Greed. He was referring to a teaching. In Revelation 2, 22 to 23, as I round up, are you blessed tonight? Behold, I will cast into a bed, and them that commit adultery will turn into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill our children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. The statement, them that commit adultery with her, implies ministers who through their teaching, who through their teaching of Balaam, seduce and cause people to go astray. Any man of God that through the doctrine of Balaam is teaching people to go astray. Teachings like so a hundred thousand, God will make you a millionaire. No, that's fraud. That's stealing. That's stealing. Teachings like give. God will give you more than you can carry in your house. Your storehouse will be full. There will be nowhere to put money. Hey? That's fraud. That's stealing. See, I hear you. Yeah, those kind of teachings. Teachings that make God look like a money doubler. And many people like those kind of teachings. And he said those ministers that cause people to go astray. That lead believers into the error of idol worship. The error of Balaam. Brought by greed and covetousness. And his clear instruction for them is to repent. That is to desist from that kind of ministry. It shows the difference between the servants of God and false prophets. Am I, am I communicating? And he says he will kill our children with death. It cannot be literal. In this context, to kill is the word, to kill is the Greek word, apok, apokteno. It was used by Paul in Ephesians 2.16. Having slain the enmity thereby. So to kill means I will cause them to cease. I will cause them to cease. God wants to reconcile them. He wants them to repent. But if they refuse to repent and harden themselves, he said he will take away the candlestick to bring them to an end. That is that thing they are doing will not survive. 
Now, I'm not saying this to rejoice over somebody's misfortune, but just to inform and, and, and talk to people that may be watching who are into that. A particular man of God somewhere stood up and told a few people, we are native doctors, openly. We, do, we are not called to take people to heaven. If you want to go to heaven, go to Dr. Damina. They are the ones called to take people to heaven. We, we are native doctors. We are here to collect people's money. And he was speaking it openly. Some ministers that overheard him saying it came and told me. I've never met this guy all my life. A few weeks ago, I heard they were doing an arm robbery raid around his compound where he lives. He came out with his small gun to confront the arm robbers. And they took him out. That Jesus, he say he has not been called to take people to. It is me that is called to take. He will face him. He will go and face him. He has actually faced him. I'm not rejoicing over it. But you know, when people do things, they do not even realize that life here is temporal. People don't realize. People don't realize. People just do things. Talk anyhow. Talk as if, you know, it, they have no regard for the word of God. God said, I will kill her with our children, with the children. I will, I will kill that, that spirit with the people that are proponents of it. Proponents of it. If she does not repent. When this letter was written, it was a warning to the church. When you hear me preach these messages with vehemence, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. I'm like a lone voice. But I'm bringing to the body of Christ a thus saith the law. Because judgment is already going on in the body of Christ. There's judgment going on. There's judgment going on. Judgment is going on. It has never happened before in the history of the church of Christ that people are suddenly waking up, including unbelievers, to x-ray the church. Even unbelievers are x-raying the church. Unbelievers are saying Christianity should not be God for sale. Unbelievers are saying if God is really God, why must we pay to know him? Unbelievers are x-raying the church. That's judgment. That's judgment. Judgment is going on. You know, I was sharing with Pastor Christian Nainka last year. I told him that I sense in my heart, few years from now, judgment will hit the church. Early this year, when these things began to happen, he called me and said, that judgment you spoke about has started. It's going on in the body of Christ. There's a sifting going on. There's a sifting going on. Jesus is sifting the church. He's separating the wheat from the chaff. Somebody say, I hear you. And that's why this message, this message is judgment. This message is judgment. And that's why everybody has got to be careful. You're a preacher, you're a man of God watching me. You got to be careful. God is no respecter of persons. He said he will kill our children with her. He shows that that church will come to an end. It implies that that movement, that movement will not survive. That, that movement will not survive. And it's the responsibility of the church to stop it believers rising with this revelation all of you catching this understanding it is our collective job to stop fraud and bring out the real message so that the lost can see jesus and be saved you need to know how many people have come to the knowledge of christ through this message we've preached in the last few years including muslims including people who have stayed away from church for years some of our brethren in our Abuja church, one of them, I was meeting with them, a few of them, just to share fellowship with the leadership of the church. As they gathered to share with me, I just started talking. One of them said, Papa, I had left church. I've not stepped into any church for three years. And I made up my mind, I will never go to church again. If that is all church is about, I'm not interested. I don't want to be part of it. Then I stumbled on your message. And then I couldn't stop listening. And then I couldn't stop listening. And then I became addicted. And that is how I got hooked. And I didn't go to church. I was just with your messages. Until the campus was starting. Somebody say, even me. Somebody say, even me. Somebody say, me too. 
all over the place. Almost all our members in the Abuja campus have not been going to church for years. They had given up on church until they heard the message. So you can imagine when all of us, with the nations of the world and people everywhere, will rise up to preach this message, the entire world will be taken over. Somebody shout, I hear you. Oh, glory to God. I'm excited. I'm excited, friends. Don't your neighbor say, this is a new day. Stand on your feet. Walk to two, three people. Tell them, this is a new day. This is a new day. This is a new day. I want you to speak it like a prophecy, and I want you to speak it by faith. This is a new day. It's a new day in the body of Christ. Oh, yes. This is a new day in the body of Christ. Glory to God. This is a new day in the body of Christ. I said, this is a new day in the body of Christ. I said, this is a new day in the body of Christ. I said, this is a new day in the body of Christ. I said, this is the day of Jesus. I said, this is the day of Jesus. Glory! 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 And I'm excited that God is gracious to us as a church to make us part of what God is doing right now. Oh yes, we could have been among those people doing all those things. God's grace and mercy. We could have been there eating the, in the table of devils. Feasting in the idolatry of, of, of Jezebel. We could have been there doing who stole my shoe. Koboko versus Koboko. Altar versus altar. We could have been there doing all those things. Could have been there doing bring 5,000 naira, raise an altar. Which altar? Altar. It means place of animal sacrifice. It's not money that raises altar. It's animal sacrifice. Don't you understand English? 5,000 raise altar. Altar for what? Who could have been there? But the grace of God. And that's why this same grace that has located us, we must make it locate others. Somebody shout, I hear you. Somebody say, I am graced to help others locate grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I pray tonight all over the world in this building, on television, on Facebook, YouTube, all our campuses. I declare that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord among us will flood the earth as the water covers the sea. Every one of you continues to grow in grace. You continue to grow in knowledge. You continue to grow in the knowledge of Christ. In the name of Jesus, barriers are broken completely. I decree that the reality of your identity is rising big on your inside. The revelation of Jesus is flooding your heart, flooding your mind, flooding your environment. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that grace has enabled us to come this far. And by grace, we will cause this world to hear the message of Christ. Thank you, Father, for the blessing. We are blessed beyond the cause. We are kept by the power of God. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says that, Amen, on a note of final letter. Welcome back, ladies.